James Carpenter with Country Living. Welcome to my channel and thank you for watching my videos. Today's video we're going to talk about uh, burning wood. I've got about 35 years of experience uh, burning wood now and I'm going to walk you through 35 years of let's say connoisseuring the wood burning process. So what you see behind me is a semi trailer. In the semi trailer is where we store the wood. There's enough wood in there to burn for at least two, maybe two and a half years. So we keep it dry, out of the weather, inside the trailer. Now what I'm not going to do today is I'm not going to go into the process of splitting wood and acquiring wood. Uh, that would be a separate video but that is uh, quite a chore in itself. The reason, the primary reason I burn wood is not because I'm trying to save money. I'm a firm believer that if the power grid were to go down or there would be an interruption with uh, either propane or gas or heating oil, I have a way to keep warm. So it's basically a survivalist uh, type thing for me even though it does offset somewhat the cost of heating my home. All right, so now we're at another location, much closer to the residential property. This uh, pile of wood is tarped to keep the weather off of it, and it's obviously dry wood, ready to go for this year's burn. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some of this wood and we're going to show you the distance from this wood pile to the house and how it's important that in the early days I used to track this wood through my house into the into the area where the wood burner was and the bark and the little wood chips it just created such a big mess so I thought that there has to be a better way to do this so what I did is I installed a door on the side of the house barn dominium by the way uh, and I do want to say a barn dominium before they became popular I built this one in the very early 1980s so let me grab some wood and show you how this is done Now this is the access door that I built to keep everything a little bit cleaner. As you can see, it was what, every bit of what, 25 feet from the wood pile to the door. So the door, you'll see a little spring here. The spring keeps tension on the door to keep it nice and tight. So we'll open the door. It's a nice solid metal door. This is the latch mechanism. I'll move that for you. That's what latches the door. And then there's the opening into the house. And there's a chute for the wood to slide down into that basket. So basically it's like this. Normally, we would uh, put a lot more wood in there than that, but for the uh, video, we're just going to show you basically how it's done. Now up here, I want you to notice this vent. Okay, this vent, I'll talk more about that once we go inside, but know that this is how the vented air gets out of the building. Okay, so now we're in the uh, area where the wood burner is. Over here, you can see that door that we were at earlier, and you can see the chute, and you can see the bin that the wood goes into. Now this is on rollers, so you can roll it in and out to clean behind it. So we've got 
basically you can store about three days worth of burn in here if you stack it right and then some of the tools we'll talk about some of the tools well first let's talk about the furnace the furnace was purchased in there in the early 80s at TSC so basically this has a burn chamber inside and then it has this casing around it okay so what you see here and here are two eight inch basically duct work and they go up one goes that way and the other one goes the other one goes up into the attic and it goes that way so basically this furnace has a thermostat on it when it reaches a hot enough temperature the thermostat kicks on and it originally had two fan motors on the back of it mounted down low those eventually wore out so what I put in was basically this plenum system okay so right here behind this door is a filter and these are cold air return ducts here and there's another cold air return on the other side of the wall so the cold air goes through the filter inside here is a regular furnace blower it's a big squirrel's cage so we replaced the original two little blowers on the back of the stove with um, our own furnace blower now again everything's worked works off of a thermostat so when it kicks on it basically filters the air blows it into the box around the burn chamber out through these two eight inch ducts one of them goes to that end of the house and the other one goes to that end of the house <clears throat> and they basically distribute the heat and then you've got radiant heat that's coming off the stove which makes this room get considerably warmer than the rest of the house so what we've done there and obviously the filter needs changed I should have done that before I did the video we've got another blower over here that's tied into this furnace when this when that blower kicks on this blower kicks on and what happens is it pulls the heat from this room and runs it through this duct and supplies heat to one of the uh, bedrooms so it draws heat from this room transfers it to the bedroom now this apparatus here is kind of like your range hood on your stove you know you turn it on to draw the uh, fumes and stuff for your cooking fumes away from the house and it blows them outside earlier I showed you that vent outside so this is where the air comes in goes here goes and it's vented to the outside so basically to turn that on you got this variable speed here so what happens is if you open this and a puff of smoke comes out you're not stinking up the whole house that puff of smoke comes up gets sucked out of the house and it goes away this is on a variable speed so you can turn it down if you desire but usually you only have it on you know for a few minutes while you add wood to the stove okay so let's talk about some tools uh, this looks pretty crude you're gonna call it a piece of angle iron and I'm gonna have to agree uh, but this is used down here this bucket by the way is used as a basically a stool so your your ash is down here now you can see the ash but let's let's get another tool first let's put that one down let's get this tool all right now 
this is one of the dirtier parts of burning wood is this ash so what I've found over the years is that if I if I take it out of here very slowly and I take it down to this stainless steel pan and I dump it slowly I don't have that all that dust popping up and getting all over everything so bring it out slow put it in the ash pan Okay, so that's basically how that works. I just store my tools up here. Now, let's grab this. This is another piece of angle iron that we welded onto a steel rod. And basically what this is for is to reach back in there to the very back. See how I can drag that forward? That allows me to bring the ash forward. Then once the ash is forward, I can get the rest of it out of there. The stove originally came with a pan and you would drag the pan out of there and empty the ash pan. And I I didn't care for that. That was pretty dusty. Right here had it had what was called a shaker where you you could shake. I don't even remember what the tool looked like that went on that. It's been so many years ago that I got rid of it. So for my shaker. I did away with the original grate and I made a grate out of rebar a lot stronger so you take this in here like this you turn it upright and can you see that pretty good see that little bit of shaking I'm doing there that's bringing that ash down It's in the burn chamber. Okay, so we bring the ash down that way. And then we can clean some more of it out of there. So, basically what I'm saying is that I took the original stove and over those 35 years, I've come up with my own modifications to burn the wood, to make this process as clean as I possibly can. As smokeless as I possibly can. Okay, so. Very little dust generated there. Now this little guy here basically controls how much air is going to go into that burn chamber uh, if you open it up all the way you're going to burn real real hot if you close her down all the way it's going to be a very slow burn uh, obviously over the years i found out that slow burns are not good because you get a lot of creosote built up in your chimney and um that can create problems now back here we have a, a brush so about once a year every spring you go up there on the roof you take the cap off the chimney and run the brush down through there and clean it out and then everything falls into a 90 back here so I've got these two tools here where you can reach in there and drag the stuff out of that 90 in the back so 
on the burn chamber itself I've had to modify this a little bit because the the seal the seal inside the door here gets worn and uh, loses its tension so this allows me to get more tension on there so now basically what we got let me get a flashlight is there's your burn chamber now you can see the grate down there where I shook it and stuff I didn't clean this out as clean as I could but um, I could kind of rake that stuff a little bit with that other tool I showed you earlier and get that completely cleaned out but those fire bricks in there has been in there 35 years and we're still working just fine so what we're going to do now is we're going to start a fire for you now I'm not supposed to know this but I'm getting a Christmas present this year from uh, the Morgans their channel uh, I know they ordered me some of that fire starter stuff so I'll, uh, I'll end up using that but for today since I haven't opened that Christmas gift yet I'm going to use from the paper shredder I've got some paper from the paper shredder I'm gonna put that in there okay and I'm gonna put some smaller pieces of wood in there These smaller pieces of wood here, this is hardwood, but it's, it's from my, from the shop when I do woodworking. I just saved the scrap for purposes like this. This stuff will ignite just a little bit faster. Okay, and I will put a couple pieces of uh, bigger wood. top okay I am kind of looking forward to that fire starter starter because right now I use an accelerant the same thing you would use a charcoal lighter for the grill I'll uh, soak this down a little bit. And we'll take a lighter. get her lit I'm gonna open this draft door for now I'll let a lot of air in there so Mike if you're watching I guess this charcoal lighter fluid works pretty good too but I am looking forward to your I'm gonna turn the fan on just in case any smoke comes out of there there is a little bit of smoke coming out I'm gonna go ahead and what I can do for now close that door like that all right so I hope this video was a good informational video for you but with 35 years experience I feel like I've pretty well mastered burning wood I've got it down to where I can keep the area clean uh, the ash I use the ash on the garden uh, the wood we can talk about 
wood, sourcing wood, but uh, I obviously have ways of doing that, uh, economically by the way. And uh, here in a few minutes, the stove's gonna be extremely warm. And the blower will kick on. And the uh, propane that we're currently using with the furnace will basically go dormant as long as I have the wood burner going. I have to service this probably four times a day. So I service it before I go to bed. I get up in the middle of the night, go to the bathroom. I service it then. And then I service it sometime early morning and sometime uh, mid-afternoon. So it needs attention about four times a day. And again, don't burn them too low because you will cause your chimney to uh, creosote up. And uh, I've had that happen in the past and the whole house gets smoked. Even that thing can't keep up with it. I wanna thank you for watching my video. I hope this information was beneficial. Thank you and have a great Christmas.